Hi folks, this is Pastor David Childers. I'm privileged to pastor Peaceway Christian Center here in Las Vegas, Nevada. My wife and I started this church, can you believe it, in 1985. <laughs> That's last century. And we have been pastoring here for over 35 years. God has called us to this ministry. Today we need your help in prayers and also in finances. You see, we are called to, to be a spiritual lighthouse to the lost of Las Vegas. And uh, we are reaching those that desperately need Jesus in one of the most difficult cities in America. So we need your financial support to help us continue. Continue producing these online sermons and continue with the many ministries of this church. If you could send us your support through Venmo, our username, username in Venmo is Peaceway Christian Center. If you'd like to send us a check, please do so by making the check out to Peaceway Christian Center and send it to 7570 Peaceway, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89147. Help us to continue to minister in the spiritually neediest city in America. Well, God bless you. We hope to hear from you soon. Now let's enjoy this week's sermon as we hear the word of the Lord. Hi folks, this is Pastor David Childers from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, this sermon is for Sunday, May 23rd. Uh, we're taping it. Uh, we are going to have a guest speaker at the church. Uh, he is uh, Rudy Greco. And I just wanna encourage you to come and hear him preach. He does a fantastic job. Uh, he's preaching uh, while I'm away in South Korea. Well, God bless you. And uh, this is the sermon that is online uh, on YouTube. Uh, the sermon title is, The Healthy Christian Understands and Accesses the Great Power Available to Him or Her Through Christ. And friends, we have God's power flowing through us. So let's use it, amen? Let's use God's power flowing through us. Ephesians 1, verses 18 through 23. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he puts all things in subjection under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you. We are your followers. We name Jesus as the Lord of our lives. And we believe that Jesus rose from the dead in a great display of power. Only God has power over death. God, you have that power. Help us, help us to realize the power of God in our lives and help us to live because of that power. Help us to live rightly before you so that we can show this power as we minister in your name and help to touch the lives of others for your eternal purposes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> in Tommy Tinney's book, The God Chasers, he tells the story of a pastor who, was an, who had an atheist brother-in-law who out of the blue comes for a visit. And, and this brother-in-law did not have much of a relationship with them because they were believers and pastors. So the pastor and his wife were surprised he'd come to see them. So while picking him up from the airport, just as they're passing by the church, 
the brother-in-law asked to go and see the church and all the remodeling that they had done. Well, when the pastor opens the door, uh, the atheist brother steps one foot in the foyer and he crumbles to the ground screaming, I can't take this, I can't take this. And after an hour of being inconsolable, the pastor asks him, what happened? And he said this, I don't know what happened. All I know is that when I was outside the church, I was an atheist and I was okay with the way I thought. But when I put one foot in the church, I came face to face with God and knew I was wrong. Wow, what a great display of the Lord's power. God takes this atheist who's very happy in his belief system and in his life, but God reveals himself and destroys everything this man believes. Why? God wants this man to know the truth and to go to heaven and not to go to hell. What a great display of God's power. Our first point today is this, God uses his power to bring the truth of who he is into our life. The scripture we read, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his might, uh, his mighty power. That's verse 19, which is elaborated on in verse 20 through 23, that they may know more about this awesome power. This power to you, that was used to raise Christ from the dead, verse 28. And you may ask the question, why did Jesus rise from the dead? <laughs> the simple answer is because he wanted to. Also, because he is God, he is the God of life. Life overwhelms death when you're God. It would be unsupernatural for God to stay dead. In fact, he could not stay dead because he would not. Hallelujah. Another reason God showed his power was, and this is our second point, Christ being raised proves that all will be raised. We are either raised to eternal life or eternal death. And in addition to this, I want to list the breadth of God's power. 2A, this power is used to exalt Christ and set him as his own and set him at the right hand of God in heavenly places, far above all power and every name in this world and in the world to come. To be the power used to subject all things to Christ. Think about that for a moment. To see the power used to make Christ the head over all things. So all this definition and scope of power, it resides in God and it is for you. Hallelujah. Our third point is this. God uses his power to reveal himself to people. His power flows through us to mature us. And then it gives us the ability to reveal Jesus to families and individuals. I remind you, Paul on the Damascus road, he experienced the power of God and the way that God revealed himself. Paul said to him, who are you? Well, you know, let's, let's read about it. Be on the lookout for the power of God being shown. Let's read Acts 9, 1 through 9. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. And Saul is the other name for Paul. So he went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found anyone there who belonged to the way, and that's what Christians were called then, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. And of course, now Paul is nearing Damascus. As he neared Damascus on his journey, Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, 
Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go to the city and you will be told what you must do. Scripture records that the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but they did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. And they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. What a great display of power. Some time ago, a young man in our church by the name of Chris Drescher had us pray for his mother who had cancer. The mom was experiencing abnormal symptoms, stage one lymphoma cancer. So Chris has been in the church listening to sermons. And he said, these are the kind of people I need in my life. And he was very open to the coming to the Lord. And he was open to the, the power of God, the power that the Lord had to make a change. So he's very worried about his mom. He asked for prayer for her on a Wednesday night service. There was surgery to remove the lymph nodes to stop the cancer. And the results of the surgery is that the cancer is gone. But she did not do chemo which the doctor said was unusual and that the recovery was supernatural. She got her strength back very quickly. The doctors were amazed. The Lord healed his mother. This is a display of God's power. Well, the healthy Christian, the healthy Christian has the eyes of his or her heart opened in order to know the power available through Christ. I want you to know that we have power through Christ. So in conclusion, one of the healthy Christ, once the healthy Christian has his eyes are opened to the power available in Christ, then he or she needs to live in that reality. May God bless you. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you. I pray that we would live in the power and in the authority that, that you have for us. For Lord, we are not to just live out our Christian lives, but we are to live it in authority, influencing other people. And Lord, I just pray that you would use us mightily and that we would be bold for you to believe you for miracles, be bold for, to, to, to witness to others for Christ. For Lord, we have resurrection power flowing through us. And so I just pray, God, that we would understand our position in you and that we have the exousia, the power to make choices that, that have divine power to them. May we realize our choices to witness, our choices to pray have divine power. And Lord, then may you use your dunamis, your supernatural power. Let it flow through us to others so that people can know that you are the God of power and that you're the God that changes everything, and that you're the God that rose from the dead. And Lord, we thank you because since you rose from the dead, we know that we will not have to face the second death, which is hell. And when we pass from this world, we pass into the glories of eternal life, which start when we accept you. Now, Lord, bless everyone that has heard this message. I pray that we would use your power for divine purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I just want to tell you about some uh, opportunities you can have with our school and our preschool. Building Blocks Preschool is an amazing preschool open to children ages 12 months to 12 years. 
Character building and biblical values are very important to our Christian curriculum. Our staff is fully trained and committed to serving our families with excellence in all areas. And we will be accepting this year stay-at-home students ages 5 through 12 this coming school year. So if your child cannot go to his regular school and you need to go to work, then you, you have an opportunity to enroll your child into our child care. COVID-19 protocols are in place to make sure that we keep our staff and children safe. Contact our director, Shirley, at 725-219-8866 or call the preschool number 702-873-7340. We enroll children receiving Urban League assistance and we are reopening Monday, June 29th, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we are looking forward to speaking to you about enrolling your child. Spring Valley Christian Academy is a fully accredited Christian school in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we are taking children uh, in grades kindergarten through eighth. We teach a biblical worldview and we encourage our students to excel in every area of their lives. We provide a wholesome, loving, and safe atmosphere for our students. We strive to be the place where the truth of Scripture becomes life-defining qualities of our kids' personal character. Our projected start date for the school year is August the 10th, 2020. We have COVID-19 protocols in place and scholarship, scholarships are accepted through AAA and Dinosaur and Roses. If you're interested, please call the school 702-873-3216 or Pastor Madeline, our principal at 702-460-3210.